Hello students, welcome to my channel Engineers Academy. Let's solve this particular problem. In this particular problem, it is said that if the resultant force acting on the bracket is required to be minimum, it is said that determine the magnitudes of F1 and the resultant. Right? So it is said that we have to minimize the resultant of these three forces on this bracket, right? So in order to minimize that resultant force, we need to find this F1 magnitude and the mag uh, magnitude of that resultant, that minimum resultant, right? So this particular figure is associated with two problems, right? So in this particular problem, this information is not required, right? So I will remove this axis, this U axis, and this 30 degree axis, right? So for this particular problem, that information is not required. We can solve this problem mm, by having this data, right? So now first uh, what I will do is that I will add this F1, F2 and F3 by head to tail root, right? So so that you people can visualize that uh, w what is the condition for which the resultant will be minimum, right? So let's say if, if I add these three forces by head to tail root, so let's say that this is F3 which is making some angle uh, with the y axis, right? This is that angle, let's say this angle is alpha, right? This is that F3. And let's say that we have that F2 vector. F2 vector is acting along the x-axis. That is the horizontal, right? This is F2. Its magnitude is 200. And let's say that we have that F1, which is making 30 degrees. Here it is given that it is making 30 degrees with the y-axis, right? So let's say that this is my F3. Oh, sorry, this is F1, right? This is F2. This is F1 right and f1 is making 30 degrees with the y axis right now let me draw the line of action of this f1 force right so this is the line of action of this f1 force right the angle of f1 is fixed but the magnitude is not fixed we we have to find that magnitude for which the resultant will be minimum right so this means that uh, the magnitude the length of this F1 vector can vary along this line, right? So now the resultant of these three forces will be from the tail of F3 to the head of F1, right? So this will be the resultant of these three forces, right? So now in this particular problem, it is said that we have to minimize that resultant. This is very important, right? So now, uh, is I have told you people that the length of the magnitude of this F1 can vary along this line. This is the line of action of this F1. We cannot change the angle of this F1, but we can change the length of this F1, right? So if we change the length of this F1, so then the resultant length will also vary, right? So as you people can see that as I move the head of this resultant up, right so its length increases so if its length increases it means that the resultant magnitude increases right and if i move this uh, resultant arrow head uh, in this direction right then its magnitude decreases right and as you people can see that there will be a particular point at which the resultant value will be minimum and after that point the resultant length or magnitude will also start increasing in this direction too as you people can see right so while going in this direction still the resultant length is increasing and if i am going uh, like this in the up upper direction so the length is decreasing so at a particular point the length of resultant will be minimum so at that particular point where the resultant is minimum at that particular point the angle between the resultant and the f1 will be how much so the angle will be 90 degrees you people must remember this right so if let's say that at this particular point p the resultant is minimum let's say that this resultant is minimum right so at this particular point p where the resultant is minimum the angle between f1 and the resultant will be 90 degrees right so you people need to remember this so then we can say that the length of that f1 will be from will be from f2 the head of f2 to this point p right so this is the condition in order to have this minimum resultant so now if i draw a, an axis is parallel to the f1 right let me draw an axis is like this 
let's say that we have an axis is which is parallel to this f1 let's name this axis is as x dash right and let's say that we have one um, another axis is y dash which is perpendicular to this x dash right so let's say that this is that uh, y dash axis is which is perpendicular with this x dash axis is so let's say this is y dash right so from this if i draw if i say that this axis is, is x dash right in the line of action of this f1 force is let's say x dash and if i draw uh, another axis is that is parallel to the line of action of this resultant right so then if this uh, r is perpendicular with this x dash so then we can say that we can name this axis is as y dash right so in other words we can say that if the resultant is acting along this y dash axis is then that resultant will be perpendicular with that f1 force right so if the resultant is acting along this y dash axis is then this means that in other words we can write that r y dash will be equal to the resultant magnitude and that resultant magnitude will be minimum right and similarly we can say that since the resultant is acting along the y dash axis is then r x dash will be equal to zero right so this is very important conclusion right so we will apply these two equations and then we will be able to find the f1 magnitude and the resultant magnitude right so to solve this problem first uh, i will draw one another free body diagram so let me draw that free body diagram and then i will find the values of f1 and the resultant so now let's say that we have this free body diagram right so this is that f1 which is making 30 degrees with the y axis this is that f2 whose magnitude is 200 let me write that this is 200 newton this is that f3 which is 260 newtons right and it is making some angle some angle alpha right so first i will find this alpha angle right so if, if this is alpha then this angle is also alpha right so we can write that 10 alpha is equal to perpendicular divided by base so perpendicular is 5 divided by 12 so from this we can find alpha by taking 10 inverse 10 inverse 5 divided by 12 so this angle comes out to be 22.62 degrees now what we will do is that we will resolve this f1 f2 and f3 force along the x dash and y dash axis right since we know that our x dash is equal to zero right so this condition will give us the f1 magnitude right so to find the uh, x dash and y dash component of f1 and f2 and f3 we have to find the angle of f1 and f2 and f3 with either the x dash axis or y dash axis right so now as we can see that f1 is only acting along x dash right f2 is uh, horizontal right so first we have to find the angle of this f2 with y dash or x dash axis right so now as we can see that this angle is 30 degrees and this whole angle is 90 degrees then this means that this angle is 60 degrees right or we can say that if this f2 is perpendicular with this y axis is and this y dash is perpendicular with this x dash axis is so the angle between x dash and y dash is 30 then this angle is also 30 degrees right similarly uh, this alpha is known right this alpha is how much so this is 22.62 let me write that this is 22.62 right so as we can see that this whole angle is 90 degrees and we have to find the angle of f3 with the y dash axis or the x dash axis right so if i find this angle let's say that this angle is beta so we can write that alpha plus beta plus 30 degrees this is equal to 90 degrees right these three angles are equal to 90 degrees so we are interested to find beta then beta will be 90 minus 30 minus alpha which is 22.62 right so this is 90 minus 30 minus 22.62 so this angle is 37.38 right so this beta angle is 37.38 degrees right so now we can resolve uh, f1 f2 and f3 along the x dash and y dash axis since we know the angle of f2 with the y dash and the angle of f3 with the y dash right so now 
if I resolve this uh, F2 into its component, so it will have one component which will be acting in this direction along the Y dash axis, right? And it will have one component which will be parallel to the X dash axis like this, right? So let me write that this arrow is F2 X dash and this one is, this component is F2 Y dash, right? So we can write that F2 Y dash is the cost component. Let me write that f2 x dash and f2 y dash so f2 y dash is the cost component we can write that this is 200 cos of 30 degrees 200 is the magnitude of f2 right and similarly f2 x is the sine component from this triangle so we can write that this is 200 sine of 30 degrees right Similarly, F1 is only acting along X dash, so we can write that F1 X dash is equal to F1, right? This is F1 X dash, right? And similarly, F, F1 Y dash is zero, right? Since, since F1 is only acting in the X dash direction, right? Similarly, we can write that F3 X dash, if I resolve F3 along the X dash and Y dash axis, so again, uh, this F3 will have one component along Y dash like this, right? And then it will have one component which will be parallel to the X dash axis is like this, right? So this one, let this one is F3 Y dash and this one is F3 X dash, right? So now as we can see that F3 Y dash F3 Y dash is the cost component, right? So we can write that this is 260 cos of, I can write that this is 260 cos of 37.38. And similarly, F3 X dash is the sine component, so we can write that this is 260 sine of 37.38, right? Now when we have resolved all these three forces, so we will use these two equations, these two conditions, right? So our X dash, is equal to the summation of all the components along the x dash axis and this will be equal to zero right according to that conclusion so now uh, the summation of all the components along x dash means that we have to write that f1 x dash plus f2 x dash plus f3 x dash will be equal to zero right so in order to aid these, we will consider the direction of f1 x dash plus f2 x dash plus f3 x dash, right? Since we will aid them algebraically, right? So now, uh, f1 x is f1, magnitude is f1, and it is acting in the positive x dash direction, right? So I will write that this is f1. It is acting in the positive x dash direction. f2 x dash is also acting in the positive direction, right? So again, if I, if I draw the components of that f2, so it will have one component in this direction like this and let me try it a bit smaller right so that you people can see it right and the f2 x dash component is acting in the positive x dash direction right so we will write that this is plus f2 x dash so f2 x dash magnitude is this thing so we can write that this is 200 sine of 30 degrees and F3 X dash is acting in the negative X dash direction. So we will write minus and its magnitude is this thing, right? So this is 260 sine of 37.38 and this is equal to zero, right? So from this equation, we can write that F1 is equal to 260 sine of 37.38 minus 200 sine of 30 degrees. This is 260 sine of 37.38 minus 200 sine of 30 degrees. So this is 57.85, right? So F1 magnitude is 57.85, right? So this is 57.85 Newtons, right? So F1 of magnitude equals to 57.85 will give us the minimum resultant, right? So now to find the resultant magnitude, we have to apply this second equation, right? So this second equation is that R Y dash is equal to the resultant magnitude. And this will be equal to the summation of all the components along the Y dash axis, right? 
so now uh, this means that the resultant magnitude will be equal to f1 y dash plus f2 y dash plus f3 y dash but but you people have to consider the direction as well right so f1 y dash is zero since f1 is only acting along the x dash axis f2 y dash so f2 y dash is acting in the negative y dash direction right so we have to write minus sign and f2 y dash magnitude is 200 cos of 30 so i will write that this is 200 cos of 30 degrees and f3 y dash is also acting in the negative y dash direction right so i will write that this is minus and f3 y dash magnitude is 260 cos of cos of 37.38 so this will give us the resultant magnitude here so let me write it here minus 260 cos of 37.38 and 200 cos of 30 degrees so this magnitude is minus 379.80 so we can write that this is approximately minus 380 newtons and this minus sign indicates that the resultant is acting in the negative y direction right so we can write that the resultant magnitude is 380 newtons right and if you people were asked to find the angle of the resultant with the positive x-axis is then this resultant is making 30 degrees right since we know it right that the resultant is making 30 degrees with the positive x-axis is right so for this particular problem if f1 is 57.85 newtons the resultant will be minimum and that resultant that minimum resultant magnitude is 380 newtons right so this is the solution of this particular problem